Hi, this is Chris Brown of TPR Tools and creator of the Grandwork Regulation Station. I would like to present in two somewhat brief videos the use of the Regulation Station for uh, assembly which might include rebuilding or restoring or repairing, uh, certainly filing of hammers a grand piano action and uh, the regulation needed for um, placing that action in its piano so that it functions properly. Uh, I will, in the first video, uh, describe in recap the process, the initial process at the piano and the bringing of the action out and setting it up on the regulation station and the taking of the hammer scale and the initial work up through uh, the setting of the spring. So there's a lot to cover but I will try and do it succinctly. So first of all in the piano We bed the keyframe, the back rail first, front rail, then the balance rail. And when that is completed, we take key dip samples, which will be used uh, to set up that bedding accurately on the custom key bed part of the regulation station. Um, I employ a WNG. Uh, key dip tool. Uh, the tool of your choice will be fine as long as it can take a particular measurement three times and come up with the same answer each time. So I take uh, samples for each stud, if there are studs, and this action, which is a Baldwin from the 1920s, has no balance studs. Um, so in the setting up of the regulation station, I am doing my work as if there are balance studs at the brakes. So I'm supporting the styles and one in between as if there were studs there. So at the piano we have bedded the keyframe and taken key dip samples and the other element is to take string heights. The string heights must be taken along the strike line since the uh, since the strings are not parallel to the key bed. Uh, the regulation station has a string height gauge which has five vertically distinct registration holes and through those holes are recorded the string heights with a punch or a pen uh, there are two sides to the plunger, so there's room for 10 samples, typically 9 samples does it. It stands with its feet at either side of the key bed, minimizing differences between the key bed and your bench or the regulation station. And then the string heights are set up on the regulation station. Uh, with templates representing them. Uh, and suspended and secured to the rail of the regulating rack. Okay, so this action had its keyframe bedded in the piano, key dip samples uh, taken, string heights taken, the custom key bed was fit, to the keyframe. Uh, it's positioned front to back with stops, side to side with slipper tracks, and its rails are bedded with bedding elements, bedding blocks, and bedding platforms. The difference being that the bedding platform has a top that can be very finely adjusted with a screw which is uh, accessed uh, 
under the balance rail with a 10 inch Phillips screwdriver. So once the keyframe has been bedded, the regulating rack is set up uh, using the string height gauge, sliding base, and rail uh, to, to be at uh, strike above uh, the hammers uh, such that there is a collar in contact with the bracket at strike and a collar that will be in contact with the bracket at uh, at hammer line or blow distance and um, distances say for uh, let off can be set uh, or for back checking uh, I I tend to do my uh, check my back checking by uh, playing it off uh, the templates um, but when that is done, the squaring platform is set up uh, to later do the travel and squaring, but initially to suspend the hammers at strike. And uh, when, when they came out of the piano, they had groove marks on them, which at strike is a template of where the strings are. So by suspending the hammers, against the underside of the template which is set up at strike uh, and with a white pen I can mark the hammer scale along the profile edge of the templates. Now at this point uh, the work needed on the parts of the action uh, took place. The hammers were taken off, they were filed, the tails uh, needed to be uh, reshaped. In particular, uh, whoever selected these hammers, they were hammers from a 26 base set, uh, and this is a 20 base um, action, and they had not trimmed the length of the tails. So there was work to be done. Uh, the hammers were filed at uh, the uh, my filing jig uh, in the flared sections and then in the two treble sections once reassembled and uh, traveled to vertical with the squaring platform and shank traveler and uh, made vertical at strike with the hammer square. Then I was able to gang file the hammers so that they're very even and have integrity one to the next. Okay, once, once the, okay, the traveling after reassembly, the traveling happens first, is made vertical. Traveling affects the squaring. So once the traveling is vertical, the hammers can be squared to vertical. And once the hammers are squared to vertical, we can then uh, adjust their spacing to the hammer scale that we have. And uh, once we have the hammers in place, we then proceed to um, to organize uh, the keys and the rest of the parts to that scale. Now the keys uh, have been bedded. Uh, uh, the keyframe has been bedded on the custom keybed and uh, the final step of which was to set our dip samples and once that has been done it's it's then possible to space square the keys 
and uh, level them and dip them. Now the front rail I do with the WNG dip block, uh, the key dip, the, the, the naturals I key dip with the WNG dip block, and the sharps I rough in to a place that isn't buried and isn't high that is calculated to be just a little lower perhaps than the final dip. And then kind of a somewhat radical thing, I do the back checking. And with the back checking done, even though the sharps will need to be redone, it will give me the information I need to set the spring tension. And once the spring tension is done, uh, other aspects of the regulation can proceed without readjustment. So at that point in the process, we'll take a break and return to discuss the remainder of the regulation on the Grand Work Regulation Station. Thank you very much.